Thank you, Steve, um, and thank you, the organizer, for inviting me to participate in this uh, symposium. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Mariana Vero and Matt Kaledi for setting the stage of my presentation. <clears throat> when they asked me about this uh, topic, uh, what do we do after complete response, I added clinical response because he, we knew for sure that we we're dealing with a pathology complete response, but we wouldn't do anything about it. The challenge is that we have to deal with imperfect knowledge and we have to go by complete clinical response. I think it has been already said before that the standard of care for a patient with locally advanced rectal cancer is chemoradiation, TME, and then chemotherapy. And I think this standard management provides excellent oncological outcomes. Unfortunately, it's associated with significant morbidity and, and long-term consequences for the patients. In the process of treating patients with chemoradiation therapy, we have learned that a number of them have a pathology complete response. Patients with a complete response may um, have a, a significantly better prognosis than patients who do not have a complete response. And then the question that has been raised is whether the TME is necessary for these patients. And you might think that this is very new and is uh, something that uh, we are starting to question right now. But when you look a little bit about the history, uh, people have been thinking about this for a while. Uh, I think the options that we have to a total mesorectal excision in patients who had a response to chemoradiation therapy will be either do a local excision or do nothing. Do active surveillance or as has been called, wait and watch, watchful waiting, ephemeral surgery or non-operative management. I'm gonna use the term non-operative management for my talk. As I was mentioning before, the idea of doing a smaller operation in patients who had been treated with radiation therapy started in the days when the surgeons were using radio implants. Local mammary in, in, in the 1930s was already questioning the need for total mesorectal excision in patients with early rectal cancer that had been treated with radion. In fact, the first case that was ever treated non-operatively with radion was treated at Memorial in 1917 by the, the founder of the radiation oncology service at our institution. And even as late as in 1930, my predecessor in the job at the colorectal service at Memorial was using preferentially radiation therapy as the only uh, treatment for rectal cancer. So, the fact that rectal cancer responds to radiation has been known for many, many years. These are rectal adenocarcinomas, not squamous cell carcinomas. The problem has been that um, with years, surgeons learned that the response to rectal cancer is vari variable and unpredictable. And until, until Dr. Kaledi comes with uh, um, a way to predict who is gonna respond, we don't have a good way today to say who is gonna respond and who is not, and more difficult, we don't know um, how to identify those patients because the clinical response do not correlate with pathological response. And also what we have learned from Dr. Mariana Barrow is that the response in the bowel wall is not equivalent to response in the leaf nodes. Um, finally, we have also seen from the first presentation in this session that um, the imaging studies, they are not always helpful in identifying responders versus no responders. The other reason why um, we have a big challenge to organ preservation is because we have an operation that works. And when you have something that works and that can cure patients, it's very difficult to come up with new ideas that might be riskier. So I think that's probably one of the uh, barriers to uh, implement um, rectal cancer preservation today. Now, again, just giving a little bit more information about the issue of clinical response versus pathological response, one of my colleagues, Jose Guillén, performed a prospective study years ago in which he um, selected patients with a stage uh, uh, three and four rectal cancer, excuse me, stage two and three uh, rectal cancer, treated with a standard chemoradiation therapy, operated them at the standard um, six weeks, and had the surgeons deciding at the, time of, at the time of the surgery whether the patient had a pathology complete response or not. 15% um, uh, of the patient had a pathology complete response. And unfortunately, the clinical exam underestimated the response in most patients. He was able to identify only three of the 14 responders. So clinical exam, we know that is not very good to determine who has a pathology complete response or not, at least when we do the exam six to eight weeks after completion of the chemoradiation therapy. There have been a lot of interest in defining criteria to identify responders, and this is just a sample of a group of experts who published some guidelines in DCNR years ago and describe the features of complete clinical response and the features of the residual disease. You have them listed in this slide and you probably have seen them in the literature. The problem is when someone else tried to validate this criteria, this is a group from um, Ronald O'Connor from um, Ireland, of the 31 patients who had a pathology complete response in the bowel wall, 
19 of them didn't meet the selection criteria, so 19 of them, they, they didn't have what is considered a clinical complete response. So we have a big discrepancy, and, and I believe that the, the group of patients who had a pathology complete response is larger than the group of patients who had a clinical response he, we adhere to two stringent criteria. Now, this is a, a piece of data from the C6041 trial. In that trial, patients with a stage one rectal cancer were treated with chemoradiation therapy and underwent local excision. And we did something similar to what Jose Guillén did in patients with a stage two and stage three disease. We assessed the response immediately before the, doing the local excision. And surprisingly, in this area of rectal cancer, we were able to diagnose complete response or predict complete response to a much higher degree. The difference is that in Jose Guillén study, the PCR rate was 15%. In this study, the PCR rate was 44%. So the way to increase the accuracy of clinical response to assess pathologic complete response, one of the strategies is to increase the rate of pathological complete response as much as we can. Of course, the day that we were able to increase the pathological complete response to 70%, like happened in anal cancer, probably we will stop doing surgery, but we haven't got there yet. So one of the strategies, as I will mention later in my talk, is to try to increase the pathology complete response. Now again, I mentioned before that none of the imaging studies that we use today is very accurate in predicting pathology complete response. You have the numbers there, but I think this has been already um, um, talked before, and I don't need to make any emphasis. So what about the data about local excision after a chemoradiation therapy? Most of the prospective data available is for early stage rectal cancers, two more than they are T1 or T2. There are a number of prospective studies that have been published in the last few years. I'm not gonna go over those studies because in those studies the patients were selected to be T1 or T2. The data on, local, on locally advanced tumors, stage two or stage three, comes mainly from retrospective case areas. And, and it's in this table, I summarize some of the most important series. As you can see, the PCR rate ranges from 30 to 73%. The local recurrent rate seems to be reasonable in some series, in some others it's up to 20%, and the sur survival seems to be okay. What we don't know is how many patients were treated and how many were selected for the local excision. I pick up this series to comment. This is uh, from Israel, in which they presented a series of 174 patients with a stage two, a stage three rectal cancer treated with chemoradiation therapy. And then they selected the patient for local excision or radical resection according to the clinical complete response. They selected 33 patients, which is around 20% uh, for local excision. And of them, 23 had um, a pathology complete response in the resected specimen of, in the local excision specimen. None of those patients went to have recurrence and they all are alive at, at the end of the follow-up. Ten, ten patients, or excuse me, eight patients had a residual tumor and then underwent a radical resection. Now, Dr. Vero mentioned this study before. One of the problems with local excision is that you have to do a full thickness local excision. Less than that, it won't give you enough information because if you have a T2 tumor, many of them don't have, don't have cancer cells in the mucosa or submucosa. You have to get down to the muscular propria if you get to get full information about how many cancer cells are left and what is the stage of the patient. So that kind of, in an anterior tumor, means getting to the circumferential resection margin. And if the patient is left with cancer in the, in the bowel wall, that might compromise any salvage operation. The other problems he mentioned before, uh, Dr. Barrow mentioned before, is that there are a number of patients, even with YPT2 tumors, that they still have lymph nodes in the mesorectum. So this is the problem with just doing a local excision. You have to do a full thing in local excision, and even then you might leave cancer cells behind in the mesorectal lymph nodes. The problem with this uh, approach then is that you don't address um, uh, local disease, and by doing a full thing in excision, you might compromise the possibility of doing a salvage operation. Because if you do it immediately, there is a risk that you might have an open specimen by getting uh, with the local excision to the circumferential resection margin. You might have a positive margin. And then also, by doing a local excision, you may compromise the possibility of doing a finter saving procedure. So that's not a very popular approach today of doing um, local excision after chemoradiation. What about non-operative management? We have some historical uh, precedent, the Prince, Prince Margaret Hospital, where they have treated patients with radiation alone for many years, patients that they were um, not suited for a, a major operation. And they proved that for mobile tumors, 17% seems to be cured with radiation alone. 
I think probably also most of you had already heard about the experience of the uh, Sao Paulo group uh, led by Dr. Abra Gama. Uh, she has presented this data extensively. Uh, patients with rectal cancer who are treated with chemo radiation therapy and have a complete clinical response, they are observed. Uh, she compared the outcomes of those patients with a group of patients who had TME and turned out to have a pathology complete response. The outcomes of those two groups were essentially similar. Um, this is the largest experience in the world, and as I said, she has published this extensively. A group in Maastricht in the Netherlands has been able to reproduce this result of 192 patients treated over a six-year period. 21 had a clinical complete response defined by clinical exam and imaging studies. They compared the outcomes of these 21 patients with another 20 who underwent TME and were found to have a pathology complete response. The outcomes were very similar. At Memorial, um, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, particularly Dr. Pat Patey, has been the pioneer in this uh, topic, has recently reviewed uh, our experience with the non-operative management, something similar to what Dr. Abragama has done and the group in Maastricht. Some patients, for different reasons, did not undergo TME after chemo radiation, having had a complete clinical response, and he compared the outcome of these patients with another group of patients who had total mesorectal excision after uh, chemo radiation and had a pathology complete response. This is a representation of the patients. Only 32 patients had non-operative management out of uh, almost 300 patients, and the outcome were compared with a group of 57 that had a pathology complete response after TME. Um, the clinical response uh, was defined according to very stringent criteria, no residual um, visible or palpable tumor, um, and the imaging studies were not taken into consideration in this case. Some of them, some of the patients had imaging studies, some of the patients didn't. This is an example of what is considered um, pathology complete response approximately 10 to 12 days after chemo radiation therapy. You see some telangiectasia and some scarring. That is considered a clinical response. Um, the time to make a decision was variable for a number of reasons. There was a very heterogeneous group of patients. There was a retrospective review of patients treated uh, for different reasons. Um, this is a case in which the patient had a um, residual ulcer at four weeks, but waiting longer, the ulcer um, kind of uh, um, scar and became a, um, a scar, and is one of the patients who have survived without any recurrence. Um, in this uh, table, we list the, the reasons why patients um, um, decided not to have uh, um, surgery. Some patients had a second um, primary comorbid conditions, and just some patients bluntly refused to have uh, surgery. It's becoming more and more common. Patients are asking almost every day in our clinic whether they uh, can be um, spared a major operation. Um, the follow-up that we follow with these patients were not standardized at the time. We have it standardized now. We tend to follow the patients every three months for at least two years, and then every four months uh, thereafter. And we follow them quite extensively. We do MRIs every six months. Um, and flexible semidoscopy every three, every three months, as I mentioned. These are the clinical characteristics of both group of patients. Patients who had non-operative management were older, probably reflecting the fact that in some cases, the morbidity weighted in the decision. The tumors were probably earlier stage in the um, uh, non-operative management and also were more distal. This is what happened to the patients. Um, six patients in the non-operative management, six out of 32, developed recurrence at the median of 11 months um, after completing the treatment. Um, of the patients who had a PCR, none of them had recurred. All six patients who had local recurrence underwent salvage surgery, half of them APR, half of them LAR, and um, all of them, they are alive and free of disease. This is a case of a, a patient who had um, a complete response at seven weeks, and then 10 months later, she developed a local recurrent that was visible through the lumen of the bowel. In this table, we represent that five out of the six recurrences were diagnosed in the mucosa with a flexible semidoscopy. Only one patient had a recurrence in the leaf nodes that were not visible in the bowel wall. Um, Distant metastasis was similar in both groups, in the patient who had a PCR and the patient who had uh, non-operative management. Three patients in each group developed um, uh, distant uh, metastasis. And the survival for the patient who had the non-operative management or patient who had total mesorectal excision and PCR was very much the same. Again, uh, the, the follow-up is still relatively short. 
So uh, in conclusion, from the memorial experience, 26 out of 32 patients achieved a durable, uh, complete response and um, avoided a total mesorectal excision. There were six local failures. Five of them were in the lumen, one in the mesorectum, and all were salvaged uh, with negative margins. And, uh, and, and I think the difference uh, in the groups were what you would expect. Probably you will choose non-operative management in patients with more distal rectal cancer and probably patients that they are frail. But now uh, patients that otherwise would be good candidates for this operation are asking about it. There are many controversies. I think this is uh, still a topic that uh, is going to be controversial for years to come. The assessment of clinical response, we don't know when is the time because I think uh, probably four, six, eight weeks probably is too soon to make the decision whether the tumor is going to respond or not. Should we do biopsy? Should then we do a biopsy? Probably the pathological data that was presented before suggests that might not be very useful because the mucosa might not reflect what is left in the rest of the bowel wall. The role of imaging, I think we are investigating new imaging modalities. Um, the assessment of lead metastasis still remains a problem. What should we um, do? What are the triggers for, for surgery at any point? Um, I list them there. The use of local excision is very controversial because it might distort the mesorectal specimen at the time of doing the surgery, so that's another topic. Um, just uh, one small note about something that we have done along the lines of trying to increase the rate of pathology complete response. This is a study that we started many years ago in which we started to delay the time of surgery by moving the chemotherapy from the post-operative time to the pre-operative time. So we sequentially started to move the chemotherapy that normally is given after surgery to before surgery. And what we have observed is that the PCA rate keeps on going up and up and up. Now, uh, in our last group, patients receive chemo radiation, six cycles of full FOX, and then we do TME approximately 20 weeks after completion of the chemo radiation therapy, and the rate keeps on going up. We haven't plateaued yet. So this is one of the alternatives that probably um, we will be using in the near future to try to optimize response and hopefully identify the patient who got a pathology complete response. So I think in conclusion, I think TME is still the option for most patients with the locally advanced rectal cancer treated with chemo radiation therapy. Uh, organ preservation is remarkably well accepted by patients and many of them are seeking this type of treatment. Um, both local excision and particularly non-operative management um, um, seem to achieve very good results at least short term. We need longer term and more follow-up in these patients. And I think the pro proper selection is going to be critical and trying to optimize uh, response, try to increase the rate of response to be able to identify these patients better. Thank you. Thank you.